All right, here we go. Uh, we are live. Uh, joining me today, I have Ben Goldsmith, uh, one of my favorite creators of all time. All right, here we How go. How you doing, Ben? Uh, we are live. Oh, uh, a lot better now that I just found out I was your one of your favorite creators of all. Who else is in there? Who else? What's the what's um, where? Uh, like five top <laughs> five. Uh, I'm gonna say when it comes to like paranormal um, writing, things of that nature, you're probably top five in my horror category. You know what? <laughs> I want to take it as a compliment, but once you start getting like, you start breaking down categories, it's real convenient to throw anyone you want to in there, isn't it? <laughs> you're, you're a charmer. You're a charmer by nature, and you know what? I'm gonna accept it. Freddie, good to Thanks, see you, man. Thanks. Thanks for coming on to uh, the second episode of the Fred Packard Show. So this is uh, this is a new thing for me, new beginnings. I'm excited uh, to see where I can take this thing. Um, realistically speaking, Ben, um, I'm we're I, I don't know if you watch Joe Rogan or not, but he's a huge inspiration of mine, and we're just gonna kind of mm-hmm. go I go can, with the flow. I can tell, just facial hair wise, you're <laughs> saying right. Yeah, this again, he's like your he's your facial hair inspiration. Yeah, Although I do like, wait, is that uh, like a little tiny little gray in oh, there? Oh, it's getting we're getting gray. That oh, yeah, one we're getting gray for sure. <laughs> I like I like that. I like that. I like that you can do the one spot. I'm I'm only 33 and I'm gone full salt and pepper in every way. This quarantine has um, essentially uh, <laughs> aged me. <laughs> is that what it is? Oh yeah. yes. uh, Sorry to hear that. You look you wear you, you wear it well, Thank man. You. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, it's been it's been interesting. Um, I feel like I've aged thirty years since this quarantine started. Um, yeah. You know, for, for some of my listeners, uh, you know that that don't know you um, as I do. Um, so Ben, you wrote a book called The Seance Room, uh, which is, in my opinion, one of especially the cover. I mean, I love the art in this book. It's painted beautifully. Um, why don't you give people a little little rundown of what the Seance Room is? Sure. So we so the Sands Room is an anthology series. Each issue is a totally separate story, um, and it all takes place in this mansion run by this guy who's kind of a crypt keeper type of dude, but he's much more handsome. And uh, he, uh, yeah. So I mean, that's pretty, you know pretty boilerplate stuff in terms of the con uh, and structure, but it's it's the content. Like I, the inspiration comes more from Twilight Zone, so it's a lot more of uh, okay. Well, if if you think this or you say this is true then let's push that to the furthest possible extent and sort of as a consensus land on some place of reason through uh, absurdity um and, and usually it takes the place of some really horrific awful thing that um my fiance is quite sick of me reading to her <laughs> <laughs> um what was the inspiration uh, so i actually have the cover art up right now i know you just released the trade i'm actually on source Point's website so everybody can See this? You can get it at sourcepointpress.com. Yeah, and I don't know if you can tell. For, do you do you know this about? There's something really like special about that cover. So all of the all of the art, all the covers have always been inspired by um, vintage Houdini posters mm-hmm. and Keller posters. Uh, but that cover for the uh, for the the trade there, that's that's I think if I'm not mistaken, Source Point Press's first die cut cover. So. Um, what you're seeing, right, is that there's the two doors on either side, and then in the middle is uh, Harry Weiss, who's our sort of our crypt keeper, our, our main guy there, our ringleader, right? Well, what happens is when you are physically holding that book, dude, uh, <laughs> that that Harry part is blank. That's cut out. So you open up the doors as if you're opening the doors to the sands room, and inside there's a very special surprise for anyone who gets a chance to actually hold it huh. and look at it. Yeah, yeah, huh. <laughs> yeah. Dude. I did not know that. Um, that's awesome. I know. I'm, re- I know, I'm really, really excited. I, I, I'm, I'm I, excited to, to get my hands on the full trade. Um, now, you're where people. So, little little backstory here. So, when I went to Boston Comic Con, I had the opportunity to to stay with you. Uh, my girlfriend and I uh, drove from New York. Uh, we live in San Diego. Flew to New York. Drove from New York. Visited family there. And drove to Boston, and we stayed with you. And on the way, we stopped at Salem, Massachusetts, right? So for those of you who don't know who Salem or what Salem is, living under a rock where the witch trials happen and all that, uh, we had a very spooky experience while we were there. I just, quick question, did Seance Room, did anything come from that area? Or what was the, I guess, the the overall inspiration for or the idea behind Seance Room? Well, certainly, uh, the, the, thing, the thing about Salem is that it's uh, like if you ever see like the perfect storm. Did you ever you saw that movie? Yeah. You yeah. ever see that? Yeah. So 
the, the Salem, Gloucester, all of that. That's it's kind of it's hard to say. It's hard. I'm I, I'm working on a graphic novel right now with uh, Ian Chase Nichols, the guy who does the Tick, mm -hmm. and I chose him to do this graphic novel because it takes place in New England, and it, it there's there's a grayness to New England that if you don't live here, you don't understand. It, it's um because like Portland's rainy and and Washington's rainy, but like New England is gray. The houses are gray. Uh, the 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 air is gray, and it seems to give everything this color of gray. So. Um, it's it's really not just Salem, man. I mean, Salem celebrates it like it wears it on its sleeve, but it's it's all Massachusetts. It's all this place, man. So like, yeah, I, I mean, just growing up here, living here, um, I think I always tended towards the I think the more occult, the more uh, spooky stuff. I, I it's just it's it's in our nature. I grew up next to a house, and my mom used to walk me in a graveyard. Like, well, and that's the other thing too is like you know the place is so. Are we allowed to swear? Yeah, yeah that's fine. Just so I know. The place is so fucking old <laughs> that there are so many graveyards here. And it was also all, you know, we built most of this stuff when there were like 10 people living in America. So everyone was on top of each other. And not until, you know, they got up to, a, you know, the, the mid midway there that they were like, we can, oh, we don't actually have to all live in each other's business. So, you know, the graveyards are everywhere here, too. That's the other part is it's not like this hidden away part of life it's for most towns there's th three or four that are just part of the architecture you know uh um, yeah, the graveyard in so, salem um was creepy oh, the, as hell so are you ta talking about the one that's like it just uh past the old house uh and, and then like if you go walk through it it's 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 got that square with all the old names of yeah and representative it, of each of the people hung of the women and on hung. the bottom of it um actually i think i have a picture right here which is perfect um it says i am not oh man please load uh what does it say the old burning point of salem witch trials it says i am not uh i am wronged i am innocent i am wronged and that was one of the stones that like freaked me out when I saw, but all these tombstones are old. So I'm on a website right now, which is wanderingcrystal.com, but it has all the names of all the different people. Um, Giles Corey pressed pressed to death, pressed to death. September yep. 19, Giles Corey. Uh, 1692. Uh, the different houses and basically all the different things that are that are going on. Um, well, and you know what's funny? We learned we that stuff we learned about in history class here. Mm -hmm. um, and only did I realize that when we that when I left Massachusetts really and, and started off on my own, uh, you know, like in Texas, they they learn about the Alamo and they don't really learn about Salem witch trials. But for us, it was such a massive, massive. We watched like movies after movie trips there. Uh, yeah, 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 the whole nine yards. But um, but th so this is funny though because you just before this we started this, you told me that you had had an experience and uh, we we ne we never talked about this so you gotta lay it on me now man you yeah gotta... so when we initially went to salem massachusetts my uh, my when uh my girlfriend and i were, were we had to get the clam chowder because she needed to, ex oh, needed yep. to experience oh, yeah. the the new england clam chowder did you did you does it compare to the red are you did you, did you grow up with the no, red no, was that no, no, no. okay I mean, who, all right all right whoever all right. prefers red clam chowder over white is i don't know i don't know they got just doing it out of just out of like just, stubbornness at yeah, that point. I would, I would have to wager on the side of stubbornness. Yeah. So yeah. In yeah. my in my like just always white. You always got to go white. Um, Cue the comments by the way of like our all of our friends who we had no idea were just diehard Reds. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, sorry if I offend you. Um, you know, <laughs> if I'm going white clam chowder all the, all the way. We we find out Josh Werner is like uh, just tr like will not. <laughs> Never white. But yeah, so we're, <laughs> yeah. we're sitting there, nope. we're getting this clam chowder, right? And we see this guy who's just kind of like staring at us, and we look, and then of course he has all the witchcraft stuff all over him, right? So he has, mm. he has, um, you know, like was the, the triangle almost looks like it's from Harry Potter, um, and you know what I'm talking about like the tri wizard. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He has yeah. like yep. one of those. He has, you know, the the star and like the circle, and you're just like, you're like okay, That's, and he's just staring at us. We're eating the clam chowder. And then, of course, we drove to your house, and I don't know if everybody's ever been to your house. I don't want to give your location out, so a bunch of weird people start showing. We up we that. don't we don't live there anymore anyway. Oh, we you are, we are set, yeah, we're more in in the city actually now. We, I used to live way out in like 40, 45 minutes out, so like yeah, like more woodsy. But no, no, we we actually uh, yeah moved into the city. And fun fact, real quick, the place we took you to play pool that night uh, found out later that they were dealing drugs, so that that place no longer uh, exists. What? <laughs> 
<laughs> welcome, welcome to Massachusetts, oh, y'all. Anyway, Jesus so, Christ. so yes, yeah, so you're, you're you're driving you're driving back out. And... Uh, so driving back out, and we, we, when we first off, I'm driving to my dad's old Ford Fusion, driving through. <laughs> I mean, that thing's like I'm great. I can't believe it made it. I you you pulled in, you pulled in. And it just. <laughs> yep, that's exactly. I, that was the scariest because my I have a Jeep, but it's in California, right? So when I flew to New York uh, to go to the to the book signing in Boston, um, I was like, you know, just taking his nineteen ninety nine Ford Fusion, whatever the hell year two thousand four, whatever it was, to Boston from New yeah. York was from Buffalo to New York was was quite a haul. Uh, from Buffalo to Boston, rather. Like if if you pop the Soundgarden cassette out, the whole thing breaks. Yeah. That's how yeah. old that that yeah, that was, was the scariest part of the trip, minus the ghosts and stuff. Yeah. But so. <laughs> This guy, he was actually this dude staring at it was just an insurance agent and he was like i'm shocked you made yeah, it yeah. <laughs> he works with geico <laughs> uh so we so the guy's staring at us and we're driving to you and it's getting darker um it's getting a little eerie she's never been to she's never seen so much green here in california there's a lot of blue a lot of ocean some palm trees yeah. not so much green so she's this is new for her we get to your place she's, and it's a big beautiful house lots of space right and we're like we get in she's you know we just came from salem she's a little spooked she spooks somewhat easily i'm not as spooky but we're uh as soon as we walk into your house your mom show or uh, you show us the um the bedroom that we're staying in yeah freaking doll porcelain doll staring at me <laughs> right? I, think it was, I don't know uh so that so the first thing we did we took that we put it in the closet we closed the door all right that was the first yeah you know first you, you, yeah <laughs> You're not allowed. You're not allowed to have a house in New England. Yo, why? Series. Why the porcelain doll? You know, uh, like I don't understand. A porcelain doll staring uh, you know, at you. That was the first experience. That night, because um, Cass didn't come to the, she flew back to San Diego the following day. Remember, we dropped her off at the airport. Yeah, she, I wish she'd been able to stay. Yeah, longer. yeah, she had. We had, we had we, uh, the comic con. You know what the thing about comic cons? If no one has worked them, uh, you, I mean, even if you have the best intentions, your time just—it's yeah, not yours. No, it's not. You know, so. I mean, you're nonstop, especially in Boston Comic Con. That was one of my, my, I was wearing my New York Yankees hat, selling, slinging books in Boston, and I. Yeah, that's all right. They, they, I mean, they love it. You know what I mean? I feel yeah. like, we, we, yeah, it's anyway. I'll, I'll, yeah. I could talk about. Uh, that. But with, with that anyway. being said, uh, so that night, uh, she and I are sleeping, and all of a sudden, I feel this burning sensation on my arm. Right, and then I wake up. And I'm sweating profusely. And she's like, what's going on? What's going on? And I show her my arm. And there's this red handprint as if it was squeezing me. And it's in the shape of a hand right here. Burning red. Everything else pasty white. Because I'm pasty white. Everything else pasty white. And there's just this red handprint right on my wrist. Um, and I was sweating profusely. And I felt like this dark, evil-ass energy in that room. Um, did did my did I set ghosts? I don't know, man. So I'm staying in the house of the author of Seance Room after I went to Salem, Massachusetts. <laughs> and who knows what crazy witchcraft shit y'all are gonna do? But I've never in my life the whole town is witchcraft. Like it's yeah, everybody whole, who yeah. lives, anybody who lives there, I'm I'm convinced is like dealing with dark art stuff, man. Like yeah, so it because like anything when you start to get into it and you start to know people because now uh sort of through just events and living here I, i've gotten to know people who work there live there um and and like anything there's you know your your snake soil sca uh snake oil salesman right like there's the people who are they're profiteering off of the the idea and then there's the people who uh those so, so you know when you walk into the stores and the stores have the the witch riding the broom, and that those are the people who are, for sure, just trying to make your make your money off of some like I, I you know some coffee that has some weird brand on it, right? But then, the, it's it's when you start to like spend time there that you find out that the yeah there's something there's something there, and it's sort of like chicken and the egg situation, right? Like I want to get back to this arm thing by the way because this is news to <laughs> yeah. me, but but it's sort it's sort of a chicken and the egg situation, right? Because it's like well. Uh, were these people drawn to this place because of of what the place is in terms of maybe potentially being more open to something that has it, or is this con uh, con uh, flagrance con flagrance con con confluence so, like gathering of people like uh, <laughs> who con congregation? Thank you uh, 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 of people who sort of bring that with them 
all coming to this place, it, it, what sort of opens it up to that stuff. So it's, it's really interesting, man, because like, uh, so I don't know if you know this, but when this first seance room came out, myself and a few other people went uh, and actually went to a real, real seance in Salem. Um, so we did it as like a, a gimmick for the book, right? Filmed it, edited it. It's up on the website. It's still there. It's, it's great. And the lady we had uh, was so full of shit. She was such a, she was such a loon, dude. She like first 30 minutes conservatively spent talking about like all the things she's done in her life. Just fucking nothing. Right. Like just a nut job. And, uh, and then, uh, so, we're, we're going through this thing and and it's i mean it is just a joke it's it's so funny you know like at one point oh you, i was gonna uh, uh uh propose to rachel the next day the next day that was part of also why everyone was there so um she's going through everyone like there was couples and she was like mm -hmm. oh you two you me and my fiance she's like mm, i don't know you guys don't seem like soulmates and the whole room just goes Ooh. right because they know that the next day Ooh. i'm gonna propose to her uh but but here's the thing. Uh, she, th this psychic lady, goes, "Oh, oh, oh the, the, I, mean, I mean, I think I read a number wrong." And uh, oh, no, 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 you, you, you're perfect. You're perfect. Also, I was the guy paying for it, so uh, she, you know, so it was all this shit. And it's like those that exist there too. Um, and it's, it's, but, but then the really funny thing is, like, she was saying this thing about uh, my sister's boyfriend and, and and this mug and his grandpa and and what it meant to him and all this kind of stuff. Kid gets home, sends me a picture the next morning. Him and his grandpa holding up this mug that she described to a T. So, you know, it's it's like even in the fallacy and even in the absurdity and, and the showmanship of it, there, there's like a weird, just a, like something there. So Dude, that's, uh, yeah, that's, it is an interesting... Uh, it, it's <laughs> crazy that you say that. So I have another, <laughs> another one to talk of. Paranormal. Were you? Did, were, did you get how many fucking ghosts did you see at my house? Just, I mean, like, honestly, so the rest of that trip, <laughs> so she left. Um, I, I, it takes a lot for me to get scared, Ben. It really does, and and that is enough for me because I wasn't holding my hand or anything like that sleeping. She was. We we're back to back, and um, yeah. and like I like my space when I sleep. So like, <laughs> you know, and my my girl's yeah, got yeah. little baby hands, and this is a big ass hand print. Yeah. Um, so. The rest of that trip, because she left, right? So I slept with the light on and on FaceTime, and the one that, and then the next oh, day, man. that's the reason why I went to Bob Sally's uh, for for uh, to stay there that one night. <laughs> I I, <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that happened. Yeah. Here, you know what? You know what? We we should have talked because here's what would have happened. I would have told you this. I would have said that that dude who stared you down, mm -hmm. he he threw bad juju your way, and then my place and everything it was it was yeah. gone because we got rid of it i mean it, it had its effect on you uh -huh. but then you know we we took care of it for yeah. you you know and here's the funny thing freddie honestly like uh it, it, you know at the end of the day i actually have never seen a ghost mm -hmm. i've never experienced anything like that and i've put myself in situations that one million percent it should have happened um and so I, I, you know what I mean? Like, I don't even have those experiences being, I just, I, maybe, you know, it's funny. Maybe I wouldn't be so keen to talk about it and write about it and all this kind of stuff if I had had a big old arm print on me at one point. But uh, I, uh, I, I, we missed you the last couple nights. I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I'll, I'll give you, uh, you know what? Uh, I will give you one, one free stay uh no ghosts next time that's my promise to you fair enough fair enough i'll white sage I'll white, I'll white sage the shit out of the place for you something i also want to talk about is there's a place in my hometown when i'm at, well it's about 20 minutes south of my hometown called lilydale um so people that are watching right now can actually see the image that i have up right now it's a gated psychic community okay um gated gated it sounds like gated, you're doing a mad gated lips. gated psychic, psychic community, community. right and it's gotcha. the world's largest psychic community. I mean, the, the houses are old. Um, it's around a little lake. Uh, they have this area um, in the trees where they, they go and they do all these different, like, um, I'm kind of pulling up all the different, it's called the uh, stump or something, the inspiration stump. There it is. Uh, the inspiration stump at Lilydale. 
people go there and then they talk to departed loved ones. Um, and then there's a healing temple that you go into and they take out all the bad energy and, and all of that out of you. Uh, and it's very interesting. I went there a couple of times. I had a past. I don't know. You did that. I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you if you knew anyone. But yeah, you no, I went. I went. Um, and I got a, a past life. Uh, excuse me. I got. Just, actually, I said that story for a different one. Um, I got a reading about. I have these two guardian angels that overlook me. And it was. I went with my buddy Adam uh, and his ex girlfriend at the time. And we went there. We checked it out. And I get this reading. And the, the woman looks at me and she's like, there's there's a man standing over that shoulder and a short woman standing over the other shoulder. So I like, here and here, right? And I'm like, okay. I'm like, immediately I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, my grandparents on my dad's side, they're both passed away. And, uh, and then she goes, yeah, she's a short woman. He's a tall man. Uh, those are your, your guardians. They're, they're always with you. They're make, protecting you, making sure you're okay. I'm like, okay. And then, then she kind of like goes like, does one of these. And she goes, and the man wants you to tell your father Lindberger cheese. And I'm like, the fuck? Lind Lindberger cheese? I mean, what, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, uh, I'm like okay, Lindberger cheese. So I get out, I get off of this, this reading. I get done and I, I go over to uh, a bench and I sit down and I call call my dad i'm like hey dad when i say Lindberger cheese what does that mean to you he's like oh your grandpa used to put that on everything and i'm like what i'm like i've never even heard of Lindberger cheese it sounds terrible it sounds like a horrible cheese <laughs> you know it, it, it is horrible <laughs> um so I, I was just very much along the lines of like okay that was a little little spooky for me that was so so after i mean so after you ask your dad this it resonates mm -hmm. what is what is then how, how, how do you then take that moving forward i mean are you conscientious about having these guardian angels your grandparents are you more open to what's going on i, I mean like what does what does that do to freddie after that experience i think it's cool it depends on how much st like stake you put into it right like so for instance like yeah the hand thing kind of freaked me out. i haven't had too many of these experiences um but there's things that'll make you go you know what I mean? That make you kind of go like ponder, like what the hell was that? Um, I, I, I will also say, wouldn't you have been just like a little bit disappointed if you had less left uh, Massachusetts without some kind of haunting? Yeah, no, true, very true, very true. Yeah, you know. Um, I mean, I had an, enough like, of a like, scare like... at Bob Sally's house that night, but that's <laughs> that's what I'm watching. All right, okay. you, <laughs> you, 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 say, I, I was just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Thing. I'm just, that's pretty uh... much an inside. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much an inside joke for anybody who's, who's watching. <laughs> nobody, nobody else will get that. Uh, but yeah. We'll leave it at that. Don't, don't you casually take a sip of water afterwards? <laughs> don't you dare. I'm turning bright red because of my pale complexion. Um, but yeah, no, it was, uh, it was, you know, it was, it was quite an interesting, um, the whole trip was very interesting, but, to be honest with you. The scariest but, part was the ride know, back in the fusion, though. That was the scariest part. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, you know, I will say this to your, to your point, though. It, it does kind of end up like how much stock you put into mm -hmm. it, right? Um, it, I... For me personally, I, I, I've never received enough uh, positive from get, you know, like a allowing myself to make decisions based off of anything supernatural to say that this is something that I should be doing with any sort of regularity, mm -hmm. right? So the, the stock for me is extremely low. So if something like uh, Limburger cheese happens or something like uh the 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 grandpa in the mug thing happens like it's it, it's a wonderful coincidence as, you know what i mean right. be and and it might be it might honest to god be the the truest thing in the world right but because again it from a practical standpoint it's like i'm not gonna now start making my decisions with my loved ones based off of this like maybe it'll help to put perspective on things right like uh right. like the little things like limburger cheese matter you know, because we look at our the people we love, and, and and sometimes the strangest things about them are the thing we remember the most fondly, right? Like then all of a sudden you start thinking, oh well, maybe I should pay more attention to my girlfriend. Maybe I should pay more attention to my mom, my sister, whatever. Uh, and you know, those are the applicable stuff. But yeah, man, I like I said, it, it's it's still to this day. I mean, and I I have very close personal friends, people I'm 
around all of the time who uh, they they have had experiences and it's not fun, you know. We're not at we're not parties and they're like gather around. <laughs> he's telling the Limburgers, you know, it's not yeah. it's 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 uncomfortable and it's not pleasant and uh, so they're not as far as I know, making it up just because of the entertainment value, which is essentially what I'm doing, right? <laughs> like making up the comics and all that. But, uh, but yeah, man. So, you know, that it, it's, yeah, uh, I, I it, it's interesting. It's, it's, it's more fun for me than anything else. Right. Like, uh, until otherwise, until further get some comments. Uh, Justin Birch says, hi guys. What's up, Justin? How are you? Um, yeah, Ara, man. Gal- Ara Galenian. Hi, all. Thanks for having Ben yeah. on. Love the Sands from series. Uh, say hi Ooh. to Ben for me. Love this guy. What's, is his name Ara? Uh, Ara, Ara, yeah. He seems like a nice guy. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's awesome. Um, guy. Very supportive. Yeah. Uh, I want to acknowledge the people that are that are watching. Um, but yeah, dude, I honestly, I'm. There's other things that have happened. I think one of the coolest things, I, it's not my first time in Salem, so it was her first time. My first mm-hmm. time ever go to Salem, I went with a bunch of friends around Columbus Day weekend. And when we went, we ended up, there was a, believe it or not, a psychic convention happening. Um, so we went in and I got a past life reading. And apparently I was a clergy in the Roman court, which was like, you know, I, I already had a feeling I was royalty, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah, we yeah, you, know, you know how it goes. But that was pretty cool. Um, my aunts into stuff like that. Uh, my girl's into. She's recently been looking at like the Chinese count. Like it depends. Like I think all that stuff kind of goes into a certain degree of like, you know, what's real, what isn't. Like, you know, whether it's you know, there's it's kind of like the myths of, you know, Chinese calendars and astrology, astronomy, and all that stuff. I think kind of all kind of the superstitious stuff kind of all goes in a a similar place. Yeah. Uh, in into the self fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> for the skeptic and into the too coincidental for the believer, you know, it lives in that place. Uh, like, you know, like someone who, if you were a teenager, you're looking at the person and they look 20. And if you were 40, you'll get the person and they look, you know, 50. Like it, it's just that, uh, that example is terrible. Cause I was trying to get something like in my head, but the, the point being that it's, it's perfectly ambiguous, right? You know, right can can be interpreted as it needs to be by the person who's interpreting um yeah and and for you know for me just with the comics and stuff like that it's uh you know mostly it, it's a a vehicle and because it's fun um because the meat of most of the stuff that i write is it's about it's the same if 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 it wasn't a, a fucking ghost and it was just freddie packer mm-hmm. it it wouldn't change the story at all you know what i mean it would still be almost this like uh it's a wonderful life type of thing you know like ah fuck me i was doing a thing and i didn't know i was doing the thing and now i know cuz ghosts but <laughs> but it, it but it, you know re- re- replace ghosts with because of sled dogs or you know because of haiku you know whatever the fucking thing is cuz that the so you know the stories are that that's what they've been always and then the the ghost stuff is just set dressing for me at this with with a lot of that stuff um you know but that's that's also just my view on art in general like i don't mean to diminish what the occult is and what the macabre is uh it, it, it's it's purely from a the 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 art of storytelling and writing like that that stuff will always just be the costumes and the set trimming right because there is no story unless it's the same shit that's applicable to dudes in iowa as it is in cali like it doesn't fucking matter What's right the, um, i guess for because i know you write other things outside of horror um, which always interests me somebody that can kind of think it, it takes a certain type of person that can dive into horror right that can also dive into fantasy or into sci-fi and they kind of switch their brain on and off back and forth from you know one writer to another you know i've written some dark things um i'm in the process of writing a comedy comedy to me has actually been one of the hardest things comedy stuff comedy is tough because you know what's funny to you might not be funny to somebody else i think right also with horror it's a fine line between what's horror and what's comedy Right. So like certain things done in like poorly 
could come off super freaking cheesy or it could come off not scary at all and you completely miss the boat and what you think you're writing isn't actually it right so yeah um i'm writing yeah. well, they, I mean, go ahead sir they come they come from the same place I, this is this is not new information but it's all about the surprise mm-hmm. right like if, if you know ah and and you go oh fuck you know or or, or if we're better friends and, and you understand the circumstances differently i go ah and you go ah oh, <laughs> you're good good you know it's it's the same thing with completely different parameters is comedy and horror because it's all about the surprise it's a release of emotion right, right? um and it's the brain the, the switch between the the horror and the comedy is just the brain going is this shitty or is this okay right. you know now what was i guess with writing a horror what do you think was the most challenging sorry my dog's at my feet uh what do you think the most challenging aspect is no like how, how do you hand. get into a writing mood or what things do you draw off of or draw on uh, to... uh, I mean the, the the biggest thing is how not to make it cheesy or like you said like you know there's so much horror already mm-hmm. um, so you're just trying to like I've been reading a ton of the old eerie comics the um, the originals and uh, the art's fantastic but you know maybe and maybe just because I've been reading comics for so long or like I, I know this stuff, but like you, you can see the end coming a page in, you know what I mean? You know, you already know exactly what is going to happen at the end. So that, that like horror moment of like, no, not the revulsion moment that it, it's not there because it's telegraphed or it's just obvious. Right. So the, the big thing is uh, how do you not, how do you, how do you not make it obvious because scare again because what is a scare it's a surprise you know so that's the biggest thing like how how do i I, i'm i'm actively always trying to figure out uh how do i genuinely surprise um a big a big part of that comes just from um working for so long in theater Mm -hmm. because you get so much input from the audience as you're doing it so you're you're kind of self-directing as you're going right like you you know the thing that got a laugh yesterday is not going to get a laugh today because the the three previous moments that built up to that laugh didn't happen the same way so you got to adjust right right? and maybe you're not going to go for that laugh you got the other day because that's not there anymore so so when i'm writing this thing uh actually a big a big uh thing that i get a lot of shit for and um i actually lost a job because of it uh is that i don't do outlines um i don't do them because the to me it takes away from the discovery right uh like what what i'll do is i'll have a a general sense of what's going to happen and then i'll have usually i'll have an ending um and i'm just kind of getting there right but the the pieces along the way if if something happens and that informs the next thing into a different thing. Fuck it, I'll do the different thing, man. Because it's it's you're going with it, it's 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 almost not even about what the story is, but what it's becoming that way. So uh, yeah, I don't I don't work with outlines because then. Do you think it kind of puts a cap I, on your creative like abilities? I think it's so. Like I think it's shoe. I think it's shoehorns. I think it shoehorns things in where you know you because the. Th- I've, uh, I've done this all the time where like a thing that was just legitimately cool, right? Like a thing that I really wanted by the time I get to that place is no longer that way. So I will just jettison it, man. Um, and, and I won't look back, Okay. you know? Um, so that, that, that has, that has been beneficial to me, but um, I, I get it. I get the outlines, you know, I, I'm working on a novel right now for this guy, uh, I, I'm writing it for him, and it's it's kind of like uh, sort of a, a re re in, in, inventing of sort of Hercules and, and all this kind of stuff, and it's going to be this big old thing. And we, I mean, we we plotted the hell out of it. It's 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 all all I got to do now is you know make it pretty. That's you know that's my only job at this point. Um, but the, but that's you know. So it's interesting that you say that. So for for my writing now for series, yeah. I have a hard time mapping out an entire series beginning to end where it's mm-hmm. like okay when you see series what do you, i mean like how many books you know, like soul, five, soul survivor six. is i mean that's to me i'm writing that more like a like so for 
a lot of people that are just kind of diving into this many people what they do is they're like okay book one is this book two is this book three is this book four is this that's the story right yeah um or they start with the ending like this is the ending let's get to that ending and that's going to take us after we outline it 12 issues or whatever it is um for soul survivor i'm taking a very much an approach of like the walking dead where you just write issue by issue and then you go wherever Mm -hmm. the story takes you that's soul survivor and then whatever whenever you feel like you have once you get to a point where you're like okay i need this is this seems like a good place to end it, or this seems like then you end it. Um, with yeah. Skyland, how, 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 it's the exact opposite well, how, for me. How do you like how do you like the uh, the issue the issue thing? How does that feel? Uh, good. I mean, I, I'm I'm yeah. very much because I feel like these characters will just continue to to live on um, and continue to grow the way just a hundred percent natural. They have their own life, mm-hmm. right? Because you're in control of that life, but you literally don't have an end in sight. So. You don't feel like you need to – you just let them breathe. You know what I mean? I mean, you know you know what other book does that, mm-hmm. which is incredibly successful and people love it because it feels like it lives and breathes? Saga. Yeah. yeah Saga. That's good. what he's doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? That it, it, it just keeps going. And then not all stories need to be this. Like I get – I get again, this is my same thing where I like I get the outline, but – but the, the truth is, like, the other, you know, the benefit to it is by the time, all right, let's say three issues go by and then you lose a year, mm-hmm. you know, you got to do something else. Well, by the time you get back to it, Freddy's different. Freddy's feeling new things. And you get to use that in the characters. Like, you don't have to try to uh, re trace your steps from a year and be like who the fuck what, what the fuck was freddy doing that and like try to get back there just let it let it roll let it ride like let that thing breathe you know and and so <clears throat> so i yeah i just that's what i like but um i want to i just i kind of want to get back to your thing too about comedy my so the next book i have coming out for source point is a comedy um and that yeah. So, <laughs> well, we, you know, I've been, I've, this has been my baby for a long time. And this was, I actually had this idea back when Source Point was, and I, I, do, I don't even know if you remember this, but back when Source Point was just horror and sci fi. Mm-hmm. Were, th- were you there for I think I, that um, element of it? I came in right when they started doing a little bit more fantasy. So I came in right when Bob Sally, the only sci fi book they had was Bob Sally Salvagers. Yeah, so I th- actually I think yeah, the two that you guys were probably the reason it went horror and sci-fi, and then I, I think like within uh, probably the, the year after that, I think that Travis sort of said, well, we we why put the per, why why put this boundary on ourselves? So now I think that they're much more open to different things, especially with like I think it's kind of like um, in regards to the other series that are out there, um, you have. Uh, essentially you know i think they focus on pre- like the premium premium stuff is horror right like so that's like you know that's what we're known for and now i think they're starting to branch off into other genres like you're saying kind of like um hbo you know hbo was known for one thing and then now they're five different things they have the premier sci-fi the premier horror and then they're, they're starting sorry my dog my my girlfriend just left so my dog's kind of Oh, she's sad. The, the puppy's sad. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that too, because you want to let people know, like, we we got this thing before you start the next thing, right? Like, we're not gonna do one thing half-assed and then try this thing and only do that half-assed and then try this thing and only do, like f- nailed the horror down. Okay, we got mm-hmm. that. Now let's build on top of the horror. Yeah. So you know, I I have nothing but respect for Travis and what they've done, especially because they give me money for <laughs> comics that i wrote so i don't know okay, as long as you're getting paid um, so that's what matters <laughs> but uh yeah no uh so yeah the next one's a comedy and it's uh this one is i'm i'm very excited because we're doing it mockumentary style which as far as i know no one's done a mockumentary style comic book before so even the uh so the the artist actually he showed his work to a a, a guy who he really respected and the artist was very honest with him and he said uh these frames are stagnant they're, there's no where's the dynamics they look like they're all filmed from one point of view and, and it was like perfect and that, that's what we were trying to do it's because it's all from the camera right so when writing it not only was i 
not only was I like, well, I want to do comedy instead, but I was like, and let me make this as hard as humanly possible for myself by giving, having absolutely always to have the camera there. Um, and I, we actually, we've been rereading, uh, rereading. We've been reading this book called The Oral History of the Office. And uh, when you, when you sort, of, would you ever watch that show? Were you an Office oh, fan, Freddie? My girlfriend yeah. tells cool. me I look like John Krasinski, but I think that's too, too big of a compliment. Uh, no, actually, you know what, dude? Yeah, I'll give it to you. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. a stretch, Benjamin. Really? That's a very handsome man, married to Emily Blunt. Um, that's true. I feel but, like uh, I'm, I'm you... okay. I mean, just John Krasinski, The Office is like, you know. <laughs> yeah i mean i mean if Cass ever listened to this later just i want for the record to be said you know she, you did better than emily Blunt, oh absolutely just for the record yeah uh, there, i mean trust there me there you go what i'm saying in my regard is i'm not an actor <laughs> my girlfriend is i'm way out of my league with my girl i out punted my coverage i got very lucky <laughs> um i mean in regards to you know it's like going fishing and you catch the biggest fish and uh, I'm probably digging a hole right now, but uh, <laughs> yeah, and then the fish kisses, kisses you. you? Yeah, like? turns, no, I'm saying like there there is no doing this better. Metaphor fell apart there hard. No doing better. Yeah, I get you. Uh, I got the pinnacle <laughs> of uh, everything I ever asked for in a woman, so I'm very fortunate there. Well, that's it's great to be able to say yeah, yeah, yeah the, I, I uh, hope everybody experiences expect- that to be honest with you I hope everybody- <laughs> well and, and you know what it's and especially you know what with, with the comic stuff like you're asking a lot of that person mm-hmm. um not only to sort of trust in something that isn't uh quantifiable but also in the time resource and the us leaving going from you know not this year obviously because of everything but uh you know going to detroit one weekend the very next weekend heading to toronto the weekend after that going to tallahassee we can you know the, the, there's a lot of that stuff and then trying to uh and, and the trust you know the, it's, it's certainly in our industry especially um yeah having having that person is oh massive, yeah uh, massive. I, I get what you're saying I get you what know with this. yeah it's definitely i don't think people realize the grind of being an author in general um it's definitely there's a lot behind it right so like you know even out here san diego comic-con la comic-con to vegas um, you know, and then you're going up to, you know, I went to Boise, you know, Texas. Um, I mean, you did this, I did probably like eight conventions and, you know, two months every weekend, you're going to a different city and you're slinging your mm-hmm. book. You're having the same conversation <laughs> over <laughs> and over it's and true. over again. And you it's think true. it would be What's... different, uh, <laughs> but it's not. Hello, dog. You know, I, Sorry. that's the, uh, uh, my dog's name is Sparrow. Sparrow, uh, can I talk to you for a second? I want to show you a cool book. I wrote this comic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's called Sounds Room. Yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, I try. I really try to have the moments where it isn't the same conversation, you know, because you've been at the table with me, you've seen, and I, sometimes the conversation will just be weird, you know, and I'll I'll be so goofing with the person, and a, a huge part of that is just because, yeah, it's it's just trying to keep it uh, fresh, not only not only for me, but I also feel like. I probably Levi McIntyre, Travis's brother, mm-hmm. who is on the road constantly. Uh, he said this to me once. He's like, I think you over more or less paraphrasing. But he's like, I think you overextend yourself as a person to these people. Um, and <sighs> there's some truth in that because, you know, I want not only for it to be for me so I don't get bored, but also for these people because I, <clears throat> I, I just I've been poor like really poor and i know what giving four dollars means um and i don't know man people probably don't think that's your, a lot somebody buys your book right i mean that's a huge that's a huge deal right i mean they're going to take the time not only to, to invest in paying you money but they're also taking the time to read the book and you know what you would never get as authors is feedback <laughs> you know um so uh, yeah. realistically speaking i yeah. would love more feedback um but you know the people that do give back and, and read it and you know some people just re- i mean i didn't tweet you know jk rowling i love your book you know what i mean um uh, but it's <laughs> yeah. a, it's as an author you kind of have this void you know what i mean where it's like you sell your book and then it's sold you know that's where it stops you know and then when you hear back how the feedback you get um is super exciting and, and you're grateful for it um so you kind of you kind of gravitate towards that so when you have the opportunity up front to talk about your book i'm kind of with you where i overextend myself 
And I want to talk about the characters, the world building, you know, the process that went behind it. Because, you know, once somebody's done with your your read, they don't know all the work that went into it, right? So it's like you have the yeah. opportunity up front to build a lifelong fan, take the time and do it. Um, so I'm kind of with you on that. Well, and th- this actually speaks sort of more towards like why I, why I'm so grateful to Source Point Press uh, was because when I came up with them, the focus was on sales. So, uh, you know, they'll, there's the adage like show business is 50% show, 50% business, mm-hmm. right? Like it's it's not just writing the comic, it's being able to sell the comic. And for better or for worse, uh, for better, I sell comics really, 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 really well because I can speak well and I, I present well. And uh, for worse being that there are probably guys out there who are more talented and don't have – uh, you know that, that that charisma thing that gets people farther than maybe it should. But the from source point, I learned to to be able to do those things and be able to talk and, and figure out the sales pitch and get it down to this if you moment. Go, if, and if you eat, go to a convention, you know, if you go to a convention, that's a good point. You'll notice that a lot of creators are on the other side of the table. Most source point creators are on the side of the table with the fans. Well, you know what I found out too is that I so I personally I probably. I, I mean, maybe people are watching this who don't know me, but I, so I'm six, two going on six, three, two fifty, right. So still st- st- and taller. <laughs> um, what, what was that from? Uh, from more and growing. It was an old, uh, jingle, but, uh, so <laughs> I sound like the grandpa was <laughs> like, Oh, Oscar Meyer wieners were the thing that when I was a kid, uh, so, uh, <laughs> It's gonna, it's gonna kill me. So, uh, I am huge. Suffice it to say, and uh, also I'm, I'm Italian. So like these things are flying everywhere too. So I found that on the other side of the table, I do worse because it feels too imposing. Um, so I have now taken to being behind the table, still standing, still standing, and, and being like you, you know, do that that thing. Uh, and then the step, the step after that is David Hayes, who you know he's got shit knees to begin with, so he sits. But he's also even bigger than me, uh, so he has to sit at the table because. He, and you know what? And and they will still come too. He'll be like, "You, come here." Yeah. Oh no, David. I mean, who says no to David? Every Nobody time. Will ever, ever. Every time. Say no to David. Um, <laughs> so you know, there's there's the degrees, but a part of that too is being being around these salespeople who. Um, are self-aware and exploring the the avenues to which a comic can be sold you know while also all of us are trying to make the damn thing worth selling mm-hmm. so it, it, it's yeah I, I mean that's a huge thing i'm grateful for so somehow yeah man no i've I i've been, I've been happy my dog this is what? supposed to be an indestructible oh, toy yeah. And now my floor looks like essentially like it snowed in here. <laughs> nah, dude. Yeah, that 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 the, the mini Aussie big uh, attitude. Oh god, he's, for sure. he's such a. I love him. You can probably see him right. Yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. Yep, there. Yep, 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 wherever yep. he was. Yep. But um, you know, honestly, man, like, so to, to kind of get back, we're kind of going down this rabbit hole. So in the seance room, do you want to let people know what the story is about really quick um, in regards to, you know, yeah. what, what, walk me through what's going on in your, in your, in this, this, and is it, it four issues and done? Is that it? Uh, well, so four, four issues for that trade, they are four completely separate stories. Mm-hmm. So you're getting four stories for the price of, you know, the one there and uh, but all the same character, right? The it's a different so, story so, coming into the set, so the setting remains the same. Setting remains it's the just same. New characters uh, that are coming into the setting every time. New, yeah, new. It, it would be like new guest actors, right, coming in every single episode to be the victim, right, so to speak. So it's kind of it's kind of like it's, um, you know what I would attribute that to is uh, American Psycho, where you have you the, know it's, it's, the, it's like the hotel, right? So you have the hotel. And then a new guest coming to the hotel, and it's, yeah, sure, know, that's kind of you know what I would attribute it to. Yeah, so the, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. You and with the four issues, we're doing the graphic novel. Then after that, we're done. But it's uh, it's it's just it's expensive to make. You know, ultimately, um, 
And now with the four done, I would have to make another commitment to do like another four. There is actually, I do have um, something very, very exciting with Seance Room and a uh, property that already exists, um, a image property that I will, I have the opportunity to combine it with, and I, I will be doing that soon. Uh, I will tell you off mic. <laughs> um, but but while we've been in quarantine, I also started the Seance Room novel. Mm -hmm. So in, I took a whole bunch of written scripts and just put them in prose instead. So then you'll have a novel with brand new stories novelized, uh, and that'll probably be out by, by next year when the whole con season starts. Yeah, that'll be again. exciting, man. So, we, have a, we have a novel for uh, the Skyline universe that Brandon Chen wrote, uh, who wrote God of War. Um, so we plan on... There you go. Yeah, see, exactly. I, You know, the, I it's... I, just just keep keeping busy, first of all, is the number one Speaking thing. Speaking of quarantine, uh, man, um, you know, what's... Is that happening still? Is that... Are, yeah, you, we're still quarantined here. Um, oh, is it? Oh, um, I forgot. I'm yeah, from, yeah. from home. My girl's... You know, in and out, uh, working from home. Sometimes she has to go in the office. But curious to know, like, has anything changed in your life? Um, you know, I, 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 the videos that you've been posting are pretty funny. Where you know you've been, you know, for those of you who oh, don't, don't know you, um, your shanty hut or whatever the hell you called it, <laughs> the, hobo the hobo shanty. shanty. Yeah, um, get it know, right, get it right, Packard. <laughs> you know, not only are you a comedian. Um, well, well, you're funny to me at least, maybe not a comedian, but you're uh, uh, nice. in regards to a musician. You know, you you play the guitar. You were in a band, uh, but also you know a writer and a well well known writer. I would say in your area and getting bigger as time goes on here. Uh, you know, I think it's very interesting to see you now that you move closer to the city where you're, you're you're going but i know you have a lot of things a lot of creative things that you go to you created that album for seance room the the vinyl we, yeah we did that um, yeah, yeah. You know, what what do you have on the docket what's coming up and then also you know how hard has it been to do everything you wanted to do creatively because i know you're you're probably feeling very stuck inside because you're the kind of guy that wants to go and do things a lot uh the the certainly the convention part mm -hmm. is tough um I, th this was a year where, um, I had, I had had a couple books that were slated for, uh, some other, I have, you know, I'm keeping stuff at source point, like all, you know, the really good stuff's coming to source point still. Uh, but I had, I'd been working with the companies and I think I was, this year was going to be the one where I was really going to start to make my mark on my own, you know? So this was a year that I was it was going to be a real fact finding mission for me in terms of looking at it and saying, can I start to do more of this and less of the jobs that I don't want to do the, the real people jobs. Right. Uh, so that all got put on the back burner uh, that, you know, which sucks because it, it, it's a, it's an emotional commitment uh, to, to, to say like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm, this is, this is the the do or die thing of like I, I want to see if I fail, you know, because um, I've, I've been. <laughs> oh hi, hey there, he's, hey. Uh, he's chewing my shoe, so. <laughs> so oh, <laughs> the Air Jordans. Yeah, I can't wait. My goal here is to eventually have like a little studio where I can actually do these uh, face to face, um, have people come out and whatever. Um, but you know. Oh right yeah. Now I have to deal with quarantine life and my dog making all the noise in the world <laughs> I, I was gonna say speaking speaking of the quarantine thing but that but the other thing too is i think people are more forgiving also of that right now because this reality is everyone's reality mm -hmm. so no one's going the fucking guy with that dog like everyone's <laughs> like at least it's not kids you know right. what i mean like that's what most people are dealing with right now is like the uh but but yeah man so the the but the quarantine honestly like i, I don't i don't mean to sound dismissive of something that is truly brutal and 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 but but i've been i've been uh in a, in a good headspace and been using this time extremely productively that's good man um I feel like it, yeah, it is, yeah i like, see a lot of people on on social media kind of raging they're like i don't wanna you know i can't believe uh you know people are expecting me to get all this stuff done and they're telling me to come out stronger and all i'm like yeah man yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Your, i right. understand that there's shit you gotta do you gotta put first priority is put food on your table that's your first priority right. your family that's your first priority. Do what you got to do to support yours, right? But yeah, secondly, I mean, I take the time to not only make more time for family because now you kind of see what's important, right? 
and you're like, you know what? Yeah. We should really spend that time together and we should really invest that time, learn about your partner more, go, you know, it, it's time to bond. It's time to also maybe call your parents more, you know, if you're not living, you know, near them to where you can swing by and see them through or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. Cause who knows when you're going to exactly. get that, this amount of time to I do think, that again. You know, enjoy the fact that life has slowed down because this is probably never going to happen again the way it is right now. I, you know, I think the, the, yeah. I, uh, so, you know, where they're paying people, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I get it. I yeah. get it. You, a lot of people aren't getting a lot of money. A lot of people, it's hard to pay the bill. I don't want to, I don't want yeah. to make it seem like this isn't a very serious thing. Like this isn't really, you know what I mean? Like, but it is, it is. Right. And, and we all, and we all have our different situations right. within right. that seriousness, right. right? Like, like some people obviously much worse, some people much better. Uh, and, and you just take yours for what it is and, and do with what you can. But yeah, cause the, the, the two things, the one of what you're saying there, right? Like just then is that, uh, yeah, the, the, you know, we, you have to like emotionally stay strong through it because you're going to get a lot of input. That's really, really, really negative because that's sort of the, the input that we're getting. But, but you, you always have to remember that, I, I, I really adhere to this philosophy um, and then I want to speak about the artistic side of this, but my philosophy has uh, for the last, I'd say like three or four years been this, I heard this once and it, it sounded fucking stupid at the time, but now uh, it's duh. perfect is uh, the, the best and worst possible thing is currently happening to you. So, you know, and, and for me, what that means now is just that, uh, okay, I don't, I don't have, coronavirus i am not hit with that um that's the best possible thing of that right but at another point in time something will happen to me that will be life-altering something you know what i mean and then that will be the worst possible thing and all of those things are going to happen have happened you know what i mean like it, it's you, it, it just gives that perspective of uh everything's shitty everything's great kind of here like everything's shitty great you know well, like I think for, it, for you know for me on my end does that make does that make sense by the way does that well you don't so life mm, goes so fast right and before you know it you're dead i mean let's let's yeah. you know be you you go through this this crazy period of time i'm not saying that people aren't going through real challenges right now some people are having a hard time you know putting food on the table right now some people are very sick that can't go to the doctors some people you know, have died and lost loved ones that have, you know, that have died or are sick with COVID. Um, the scare is real. Don't get me wrong. And I think I'm with you on the same page of this, but all I'm saying is life goes so fast. And, you know, before you know, it, we will be back to normal or a new normal. And a lot of people are like, oh, life is going to be yeah. so different. I don't think it's going to be that different once we get there. Maybe for a month, two months, three months, you're not going to keep 8 billion people living restricted Eventually, one person's going to break the rules, and the next, and the next, and the next. Before you know it, all the social, you know, it's just back to normal. You're going to have packed mm -hmm. bars, people drinking, out doing things, grilling, parties. It's going to happen. There's no way in hell that people are going to be like, keep your six feet. Did you wash your hands? Uh, going into the, I have to go this way down the aisle, that way down the aisle, this way with the mask, go out, make. It's not going to happen. Eight billion right. people, not going to happen. Um, right. I think it's good that we're smarter. Everybody, wash your hands. You know, if you cough, cough into your sleeve, you know, things like that. Maybe people will be more mindful of the situation. But I'm saying right now, yeah. life is slowing down where you can actually kind of assess yourself, right? And kind of look at yourself and be like, listen, what are things I need to improve on that I now have the opportunity to? For instance, I was well, getting fat, bro. I was getting real fat. Oh right? no! So, like, really? so now I'm. You got. Well, you got happy fat. That's yeah, what happened, happy dude. Fat, you happy, got fat. happy fat. But like you know, when you're bored, you're at home. First couple of weeks, you're bored. You're at home. You're like, what can I eat? You know what I mean? What can I eat? What can I get my hands on? Yeah. Because uh, yeah. you have nothing else to do. You know, I've only I can watch so much TV. Go on so many. You know, so now it's lifting weights, working out, eating healthy, being on a smarter, smarter meal plan, taking the dog out five times, you know, a day or whatever it might be. You know, that's now what I'm focusing on during this is getting back into shape. Right. This, well, you know, and then also creative, like, I mean, creative, like starting the podcast it, and doing things like that. So, well, the, and, and that's a huge thing, right. Is like investing instead of just subsisting, but, but you, um, I mean like how, so, cause the big question for everyone is, is like, how do you block the, the, all the negative input? 
right? Is like, how do you, how do you not just do this? How do you not just say, well, I'm getting fat, but fuck it. Everything sucks. Right. And I think that comes down to, you know, like, and it's easy to, it's easy to fall into that trap. It's easy to right. get depressed. It's easy to kind of be like, man, you know, just another day. Yo, be grateful. You're alive. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. you know what I mean? Like that's what it comes down to. Be grateful that you weren't the person who died of COVID. Be grateful well, that and, and, you know that you get to wake up and experience this thing called life. You know, and make yeah, the most I mean, of, and, the, and that, of the of the day. <laughs> like you know, and that comes down to the basics, man. That that really does come back down to, you know, just just learn to be grateful. And mm-hmm. if you can, but you can't teach that, Ben. You, can, you can't teach that, Ben. You got to want it. It's something you just got to want. You yeah, can't it's, it's it's just you either you're the kind of person that wants the most out of life for the person who doesn't right and yeah oh so so that actually brings me to that the 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 second part of that is the during this quarantine time um for artists for the art for the artists that i the type of one that i see myself as and and the other ones that i respect and, and work the best with we have never been the type of people who this was not easy. This was never easy. It was never going to be easy. Uh, even when the world was running at full tilt, mm-hmm. right. And, and all on all cylinders, like e- this was not fucking easy. So why should this thing make it any easier? Right. right. So it's to me, to me, and again, n- not saying anything about the overall implications of, of this disease on the individual lives of, of our friends and our families and our cohorts. But to me, this doesn't change a thing in terms of creating. If anything, it gives me more time to create because again, I chose to be an artist. Maybe it chose me whatever you believe, but it was never easy. No one was, no one was saying, oh, thank God Ben's a fucking writer, dude. No one was saying that, mm-hmm. you know, and no one's saying I'm, it now. Saying it, so, I appreciate your work. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, buddy. But a uh, top, top, top five favorite, uh, horror right? yeah honestly well, i just love the concept <laughs> of the seance room and i'm into like the par- i'm like it takes a lot to scare me but i like the paranormal side of things i like kind of die- like around halloween time especially like um i'm a big yeah. big advocate of getting scared around halloween yeah you know so like for me that's the time where i really dive into paranormal you know nuances and and going into like going to the graveyard taking like a scare tour or whatever you know corn maze whatever it may be you know, in Buffalo, there was a ton of scares. Of San Diego, it's hard to get scared in San Diego, where everything's so new. There was you know what scares oh, me in San Diego? Yeah. Homeless people. Yeah, that's the scariest the thing dramatic. about San Diego. This the, the whole area is pretty new. You know, I'm more worried about that. You know, like my sister and I and I want all the homeless. And like I sound probably like such a dick right now. Um, I want there's a huge problem in warm climate areas of homeless people. I want them. To, yeah, you're, you know, I mean, I want them to get back on their feet and get better. I'm just saying that's the reality. That if you ever went so, to LA, there is cities of homeless people. You know. Yeah, what I, mean? I actually I lived in LA. <laughs> you know I, mean? I think we talked yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Yeah, but no, actually. So your your point is what I focus on with Seance Room. So like, I wrote an entire uh, chapter which is going to be in the novel, not in, in the comics. But it was uh, where it was these scenes go to the the. Seance, the the Weiss Manor where the Seance Room is within uh, to get scared because they think it's fun and ultimately each one of them kind of has a thing where they end up like one girl ends up in a room where the doctor tells her she has cancer and like has to sit through that existence because that's really scary like one guy uh, sits he go, walks through uh, a wax museum uh, and each statue is a different statue of the first time he had one of these failures like the first time he watched his own uh, high school baseball clips drunk the first time he got divorced the you know what i mean these true horrors which uh because you know you say the the the, the, the homeless population and to me what i hear is i'm afraid of desperation and what desperate people will do because that's when people will do some Dude, of the worst things that they never thought themselves that's capable. Kind of what i was getting at so with the, the covid thing too is is essentially you have a bunch of people like i'm not scared so much of like so realistically speaking there's eight bill, eight billion people in this world at this point i think i think eight billion i think we've surpassed eight billion or close to the amount of deaths are uh are three hundred thousand. i'm pretty sure if we go to a site that i trust um that's been doing a really good job has been uh worldometer um and worldometer i'll pull it up right now so people can actually see it um, World of Meter does a really good job of showing the the cases and um, you know everything that's going on, right? So there's been right now four million nine hundred eighty five thousand 
uh, coronavirus cases in the world. Can you hear me, Ben? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, mostly. Yep. And then there's been 324,000 deaths. Okay. Now, one thing that people need to realize about this number is China stopped counting forever and a month ago. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of countries that are unreported. So the amount of cases are probably four times that. Okay. Mm. Um, reported deaths that we have are probably higher as, as well and because China, like I said, stopped counting. But, you know, when you look at this, okay, there's 7 to 8 billion people in the world. Life is going to go on. What scares mm-hmm. me more, okay, and if you look at the countries, uh, if you break it down by country, right, USA now has 1.5 million people, half the world uh, population. That's what I'm saying. The world has stopped counting. The United States is still counting. Um, so 1.5 million people out of 330 million people uh, were sick, and we've had almost 100,000 deaths. Okay. Um, now, what I'm more scared of is us going into a place where the economy crashes completely. The dollar is worth shit, right? And you end up in a place where people can't buy food. That's what scares me, right? And you buy, you get into a place where there's no job. We're already at a 30% unemployment rate, right? That's the stuff that scares me. These places that are opening up right now, the problem is nobody wants to go back to work because they're getting paid more just being at home, right? And now these restaurants and bars are closing permanently because they have nobody to staff and no customers are going in. <laughs> you know I mean, I mean? I'll, I'll be honest. I think it should say more about these, these restaurant owners and bar owners that – their employees are doing better unemployed than in their employee. No, I don't, I don't, um, I, I do believe, I mean, so something that happened here in San Diego, which I thought was very interesting was they made servers and bartenders minimum wage. So mm-hmm. in New York, I don't know if it's changed, but in San Diego, California, they get paid, I think it's 15 an hour plus tips. So now that's a very lucrative job in New York. It was like $4 and 25 cents or $3 and 75 cents an hour plus tips. Right, yeah. which worked out to be a little bit over minimum wage. Two different lifestyles, making minimum wage and not making minimum wage plus tips, okay? Um, but what that's forced, the loopholes, is there's certain restaurants out here that make you now order from the bar, no server, and now they can pay less people because they cut down their staff. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, people, I guess they'll figure it out, right? But, like, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. this this is a conversation that I am not – uh, anywhere near equipped to have because I'll, I'll, my thing was I'll always come at it from the humanitarian side, right. uh, which means that I don't have enough of the information about the financial or the fiscal element of things. Uh, you know, so th- those, those, the, I'll, I, I know myself well enough at this point that I'll, I'll always come at it from the humanitarian, especially having been a bartender for so long, you know, and having worked balls and dick off to for nothing, uh, for ungrateful shitheads, you know. <laughs> Uh, oh my God. Uh, but th- those, actually, I should write a horror story about being a bartender and stopping people from hitting each other over the head with pool cues. I've been, I bartended but, um, for a little while. My buddy Adam had a bar. I went there, bartended a little bit. Um, I bartended at a casino before. Bartending's fun. Yeah, oh, don't get me wrong. I, yeah. I, you're kind of like a therapist, you know what I mean, when you do it. Yeah. But at this point in my life, you know, as you're in your, in your 30s, you just, it's tiring. <laughs> that's exa- yeah. it's exhausting yeah. i dude i go to bed at what, what time is it right now 9 30 so i'll be in bed in an hour and a half <laughs> like easy yeah, dude, you go to bed, you do easy. Go to bed early. that's one thing i do know about you you're you're an early sleeper I, i'm an early sleeper because i i ever since i was a kid i'm like i need eight eight nine hours dude for for me i've I, my girlfriend turned me into a morning person so i used to be an i really? used to be a night owl i still have my moments don't get me wrong there'll be nights where i'm like yeah. i'm the kind of person that i need to finish something before i can go to bed i can't leave it yeah so if i'm in the middle of trying to do something if it's in my head I'll, i'm gonna get a terrible night's sleep anyway so i want to get it done oh, uh, oh um, neat. that's 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 actually I, I, like see you can't you can't shut it off like when you're lying in bed you'll oh you'll perseverate mm-hmm. Ah. So that's kind of it's, it's one thing that uh, that it's a double edged sword, right? So I get a lot of shit done, but as soon as I start something, I need to finish it. Believe it or not, this podcast it, it took me about three nights in a row of little sleep trying to figure out the freaking sound, and I'm sure your sound's slightly off, but I'll I'll perfect it as we get going. Um, before it mm-hmm. was a whole second off. Now I'm trying to get the 
learning how to uh, you know get the sound better and things like that. The different layovers, learning I'm, how I'm, to run a podcast by yourself. Normally, you have somebody switching between the scenes. When you watch this, um, you know I have different scenes. Like I'm pulling up the internet, I'm doing all these things. So it's it's been quite a learning curve. Um, you know, we got up to 80, you know, subscribers in, you know, a short period of time here, which I'm very thankful of. Um, so it's, it's been something I'm trying to do, trying to build and have that I can keep coming back to. I'm going to have this show where I just want to interview people and just talk. Right. And then, well, I can't, I can't wait to deplete your subscribers after this oh, episode. Fine. Yeah, I mean, you're literally the second person. So I think we'll be all right. If you were the first, uh, I don't think I would have got anybody, but no. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have been like, nope. You know, um, <laughs> But hopefully people, when they listen to this, they do subscribe um, because I'm just going to bring on creators, man. I'm going to have them talk because I think interesting, like they're getting to know you better. You know, you get to plug your book and talk about your book. Sure. And I want you to do those things. But I want people to actually walk away from here and be like, oh, Ben Colson is actually a cool guy. You know, you know what? It's actually nice because, yeah, I, there, the, you do get into it certainly with the podcast thing, especially like if you're doing like a Kickstarter or if there's a pre-order or something like that, you will absolutely get into that rut of – you know, the questions of, well, how did you come up with the idea? Um, what was it like working with the artist? Uh, what, what, uh, how did you come up with the character? You know, it's like the, you, you'll get into the same things. And Lord knows if we would have talked about like your, your sick ghost burn arm. <laughs> dude, but that's the thing. Wait, like, when, when, when apparently the ghost gave you an Indian sunburn, what's dude. More, like, what, that's, hey, what's I, more interesting? Somebody talk, I mean, I'm an author. You're an author. I mean, we talk about our books mm -hmm. all the time. What's more interesting? All the, the time. Ghost stories that we've experienced. You know what I mean? Or us talking about our books every single time we get a chance like I, one thing I, you know one thing you'll if you ever start up a podcast you'll you'll fall into the trap of watching these youtube videos of how to start a podcast and it's the same thing over and over and over again these people trying to sell you something and like oh read my book uh this and that and the other thing i just want to have a conversation you know what i mean like i want people to yeah. to walk away from this being like that was actually interesting you know what i mean like oh, i have a i have a ghost story that i want to share you know what i mean um, have you ever had anything I, crazy like that happen to you? Getting back to the ghost story thing, actually, now that we were kind of talking about that. Uh, I mean, the only thing that came even remotely close was Halloween night when I was a kid. Was when my grandma, my grandma died, and the year later on Halloween night, my radio in my room just turned on automatically. But like that, what a, I mean, dude, for like I said, for a guy who you know eats sleeps and breathes a lot of this shit for that to be the the pinnacle of my experiences right is it's i it's so, so lame dude it's so like i've got honestly nothing so it was nothing with good. your grandma you said yeah <laughs> look at you digging you're like oh we're gonna fight uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's... uh yeah so she, yeah she she uh yeah died and then and then a year later um I was I was I, I got home from trick or treating and I was lying in bed and I had this old I I I took I inherited a lot of the stuff from like my folks when they were done with these electronics so this this was actually one of those uh, radios where dig this man uh, where <laughs> when you turned it on the <clears throat> the 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 numbers to let you know what dial you were on were on like the strip through this plane of glass and there was an actual needle. Right, that when you turned the handle, you could feel the resistance as this plastic orange needle went, you know, to the to whatever side you were going it to, uh, and then lights. It it was an underlit thing, so the lights would come up from underneath, shine on those lights, and that's what you would see. So it was it was this really cool, you know, uh, looking piece of equipment, and then uh, it, yeah, yeah, Halloween night, and all of a sudden it it you know came to life turned on sang some songs and and i went over and shut it off but but the thing about stuff like that is that i you and know power your, surge your grandma that you think was doing it that would be my guess my my so my fiance is actually here right now and as i'm saying like power surge she goes mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's <laughs> so yeah so I, i'm caught between a freddie and a, a rachel sandwich not letting me pass this one off as some science. Uh, but, I, um, but yeah, I, man, I had a similar thing happen to, to me when we were, so there's, you, there was, I don't know if, if Boston was affected, but in New York in the early two thousands, we had a, a power surge that knocked off the entire grid, New York city, um, upstate. Yeah, New York. no, we, 
No, you guys that you guys took the the heavy hit yeah. on that one, man. That was not us. Yeah, I remember that. And I'll never forget my buddy um, Andy uh, calls me. He's like, yeah, he's like, hey man, there's somebody in my house. Uh, you know, I really, you know, can you come down here? I'm scared. You know, we're young. I was in high school. You know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, I'll I'll come down, take a look, see what's going on, bud. Um, I go down there and we look and we thought we saw somebody in the window. We're like, what the hell? Um, so we go into the house and you know we hear some noise that goes into the basement. And in, in San Diego, California, people are listening. There's these things called basements. They're below your house. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, but, yeah, so we go into the basement. Well, you might want to put up a picture on the screen for them. Basement. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll Google it. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> go into the basement, and all of a sudden we hear noise upstairs. And all the lights are off, so we have a flashlight. Go upstairs. And it's probably like 7 o'clock at night at this point, so it's getting a little dark. And we go upstairs into his kitchen. All of his kitchen cabinets – we're open everything and yeah we, went, we walked in the house they're all closed so they all opened up and we're like what the hell so we got scared we ran we lived on the same street so we ran down the street to my house get my dad and we're like dad you know there's somebody somebody there he goes with us wow um check check it out nothing we go back to my house and i get a flashlight i sit down on this couch and i hit the flashlight and like bop 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 flashlight turns on flashes up against the door and i see a face and then the 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 uh, what do you call it? The um, flashlight turns off, and then all the lights went on. <laughs> and I was just like, and then that so that was that was so, a freaky moment. So you've actually had multiple experiences then. I've had a couple, but at the same time, like I kind of played off where I'm just like, is that real? You know what I mean? And then there's another side of it where it's like I'm a religious guy. Um, I don't know if you are. Um, I don't impose my beliefs on other people, but I'm a Catholic. Um, and, and I do believe you did. It was weird when you tried to baptize me when you were here. That, that, was, with that, beard, felt a that was with beer. That wasn't, <laughs> shit. um, you, but I, but, but you, the so, religious aspect of it. So there, there's, yeah, cause I don't, I don't dive into that stuff because I don't believe in it, but I do believe in God. So sometimes like demons, you know, evil, things like that. So, right. So, more... so yeah, you have to, you have to accept that there is this we we you sort of say like well there's there's something more than than me in that so there's there's a, there's a black to every white you know what i mean there's there's a everything has an equal and opposite reaction um you, the, the, what i've come to accept at this point is that there are certain people who are um for whatever reason more susceptible to it um and i am not one of those people um which is interesting to me because you wrote the seance room. <laughs> you know, so that's why I thought like you would be more in tune with that stuff, but you more so just kind of think it's interesting and wanted to write about it, but don't necessarily. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, a huge part of the, I mean, for that, it's like sometimes it's form over function over form, right? Like this, the seance room itself, because there's the six different ghosts, each one being something representing sort of a different, genre of horror mm -hmm. whatever i want to do i can do in in that book right i could i could write things that should be by all accounts be on f four different television stations like you know what i mean hbo showtime fox and, and abc but in the seance room i can do all four mm -hmm. because they're it, that's so that's the function over the form really um but yeah, but uh, but the other thing I thought about too is that I enjoy the shit so much. Like horror cons are my favorite. I abs I adore. They're they're so like uh, to me they're so fun. I feel like there's a, Mostly, there's a life to it that you don't get with other types of conventions. Like it's it's kind of yes same yes, feeling you yes, get around yes, Halloween yes, yes. where you're kind of like okay um, I feel more alive. Everyone's, everyone's I feel a little bit more on edge. You know, yeah, the hairs on the back of my neck are standing up. You know, and and everyone's let their guard down a little bit more too. That's the other thing is the the pretensions that people carry around with them when everyone's kind of engaged in silliness right. we all sort of a little more open to each other but uh but 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 because i haven't had these experiences sometimes i do think that i like these things more and you know um like okay so question for you on 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 a given day not halloween let's say just like just tonight mm -hmm. are you gonna go watch a horror movie no not I, typically i don't watch a lot of horror movies you know and 
is it possible? And obviously this is like a leading Dude, question, but is it possible? Easy. Don't get me wrong. When it comes to horror stuff, I get scared easy. Well, and so, and so that's <laughs> I'm a bitch. But you also <laughs> had these, re- <laughs> but but to, to your credit, you've had these very uh, uh, palpable experiences. You know what I mean? So why wouldn't you be? You know why? Uh, it makes sense to me. So that that also sort of feeds into this thing of. Of course, I love this shit because it's not a direct. Threat. Okay, so do you think? Um, just kind of dive into this a little bit. Then, do you think that horror is your most your favorite genre to write in? Do you think that is, you know, the the genre that you personally, you know, see yourself like? If you could pick one genre to write, is horror it, or do you? Because because if knowing now that you don't necessarily believe in it too much, but you enjoy it, do yeah. you? Is that where you, if you could only pick one, what genre would you be writing with? Uh, c- comedy. 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 And yeah. you have your first comedy coming out. I yeah yeah man it, it's yeah it's gonna be it's it's gonna be good man it's it's uh mockumentary style bodybuilding aliens. Right, that's fun. So yeah yeah right I mean just just the the phrase alone is fun I'm to writing, say. I'm writing a alien comedy as well, but it's different. No, you are not. God damn it. It's different. It's way different. <laughs> So okay, yeah, good. It's, uh, it has to do with drugs, and it's you know, it's kind of an acid trip. Uh, <laughs> okay, all right, no, we're, we're good. Way different. Yeah. When you said bodybuilders, I'm like, no, these are the exact opposite. These dudes are. You're like, we're good. <laughs> picture, <laughs> picture a said, rave. I said comedy. And, I said comedy and aliens, yeah. and you start sweating. Yeah, I was like, and I said, bodybuilding, and you were like, dry. Yeah, no, no. Completely different. <laughs> picture raves yeah. and drugs and aliens, and. Oh, I always do, baby. Rick and Morty type style comedy, <laughs> but uh, that's, that's kind of what, what I'm writing with a buddy, and it's it's a yeah, very mini series. But yeah, I, I, it's been interesting writing comedy. I, I enjoy it. It's I, like I'm laughing a lot. Um, well, not only is it comedy, but it's also uh, comic book comedy too, because you're that's the 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 specific art style is uh, like there's jokes so obviously no sound effect jokes mm-hmm. right period so you know you're not gonna get the <laughs> cat when someone falls down yeah. out of camera that that'll always get you you're not gonna get to do a wilhelm scream uh joke you're not gonna get to do fart jokes you're not gonna you know none of that stuff really falls i mean down. you can yeah. figure it out yeah. bit here yeah. and there but you know so you're also now not only writing a comedy but you're also saying okay i have i have to i can't use this entire subject section of comedy and i you know you get to add other things too, right? Like um, we we uh, uh, like what, what, what are some of the like the benefits? That see, that's an interesting question. The benefits of the the comic thing. I mean, I guess the fact that they're they're aliens, right? Like that. Otherwise, that would be sort of a pain in the ass to do. But yeah, they're, they're, it's we came up with this idea that they're uh, they're they got a, a video of Arnold Schwarzenegger's pumping iron sent to them through airwaves and this very small group of people aliens on this uh in this universe got like kind of obsessed with it so it's this niche thing Mm -hmm. so that's why the documentary crew is there in the first place because of course it would be the same thing as if like all this like uh if there was like a pog remember pogs Mm -hmm. slamming the pogs if there was a pog championship going on like fuck yes i would watch a documentary about that you know about this um so they said that there was a pair uh parallel universe did you see this discovered i did and they said it's running concurrently with ours but in reverse right so can we can we dive into this um (laughs) you want to solve solve this yeah man uh get my physics so let me pull this up um we may have spotted the parallel universe make sure this is right april 8th of april is this old news uh i mean compared to what Compared to six hours ago, NASA talking? scientists may have found evidence of parallel universe where time runs backwards. Okay, so hold on one second. I want to, I want to, I want to read this um, while I do this. Okay, one moment. Let me find this link really quick. Okay. All right, one moment here. I'll go back to us real quick. Um, Okay, so this is what it says. So it's from the U.S. Sun, which um, is from the U.K., I guess. So um, NASA scientists may have found evidence of parallel universe where time runs backwards. 
Um, the discovery was apparently made while experts were working on an experiment in Antarctica to detect cosmic rays. The concept of a twin universe has been around for decades, but the new research has found particles which might just for, uh, which might just be from another realm also born during the Big Bang. Scientists used a giant balloon to carry NASA's Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, called ANITA, A-N-I-T-A, high above the frozen waste of Antarctica. It reaches heights where the frigid air provided the perfect environment with little to no radio noise to distort any findings, reports the Daily Star. There is a constant wind of high-energy particles coming from space, some of which are a million times more powerful than anything generated on Earth. Low energy neutrinos with a mass close to zero can pass completely through our planet, but higher energy objects are stopped by the Earth's mass, according to the new scientist. That means that the high energy particles can only be detected coming down from space, but Anita apparently detected heavier particles which seem to come up out of Earth. Um, so that can mean that these particles are actually traveling backwards in time which is seen as possible evidence of a parallel universe. Principal Anita investigators Peter Gorham of the University of Hawaii suggests that the only way a particle could behave that way is if it changed into a different type of particle being passed before passing through the Earth and then back again. Gorham led, author, Gorham led author on a Cornell University paper describing the odd phenomenon, noted that he and his fellow researchers had seen several of these impossible events, not everyone was comfortable with the hypothesis, he said. The simplest explanation is that at the moment of the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago, two universes were formed, ours and one where time goes backwards. However, some believe the results could just be down to scientific glitch. We're left with the most exciting or most boring possibilities. <laughs> so, um, I mean, that was a long... The best and worst. That was long, but... No, I mean, I was, I was listening to it. Um, I mean, how... how but... Okay, so basically... When it hits the Earth, some pass through and some hit and then deflect back is what I'm getting, which means but it turns into a different. So it goes back in time because they're not entering and passing through and it actually shifts backwards. So what does that mean? We're all living an exact opposite life of Benjamin Button. Well, you know so I mean? that would be that would be interesting or, you know, because now I'm going to sound like the stoner that I used to be. <laughs> everything's everything's perception anyway. Right. right? So if you went over to that universe and fucking old people crawl up out of the grave and go, let's fucking do this, you know, and then as, as a baby die by dying inside their mother's womb, you know, that to them would be normal. So, you know, the, the, I guess I'm either the most likely person to be cool with all this or the most likely person to do so much acid when I'm older. But the truth is I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I would be fine knowing that. Right. Because, all right. So, cause y you think about it, like to literally any other creature that we don't share a deep connection with our existence is a fucking in it, just a, an, an anomaly. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, Everything is an anomaly if you think about it long enough. There, there's no, there's, I mean, but but, but this uh, now now I think we might be diverging in terms of like the the with the religious aspect because I know if you if you carry God in your heart like there's this element of that there's a bit more of the purpose thing. Whereas for for me like the, the, it, there's nothing. There is no purpose. Purpose is purely what we've given purpose to for us personally and that's all based on the stimuli that we receive based on our needs as existing things right so uh, that then i think about like this or you or the thing we're talking on and i'm like that, that all that's a fucking all that you and this computer are as magical and as insane to me as if i found out a universe was running backwards in time because it just depended on who was looking at Does it. Does that and, explain and deja that. vu? You think the, the the deja vu thing? What did I what did I hear about that one? The uh, I did hear a very charming thought on that was that our it was just that the it was the most uh, functional and um, like 
present version of our subconscious and conscious because uh your subconscious is doing everything before anything else See, i was right? my, my point of view for a deja vu was always different was always you're in the right place um oh that, that the, it, it's it's that was my it's, view of deja vu but i'm wondering if this you have one universe going this way one universe going this way maybe it's when they link up at the same time or something like that you're experiencing deja vu because your past self and your future self are at the same moment you know what i mean so like but but that's... but that would be interesting because then it that that would be oh maybe not because i was thinking because then they would be going in the reverse direction so you know you you walk in out of the room and into the room and, and sort of do one of these right because you're ne- you're not doing this because they're going opposite ways but even in a mirror you you see yourself it's reflected and twisted so i mean yeah it, i guess that would potentially and again if that was true cool but that, but also if the universe is endless and there's endless possibilities out there right does that and that means if it's completely honest that means all things are possible and are happening so that means in some world, I'm the king. In some world, I am the poorest human being. In some worlds, I'm a murderer. In some worlds, I'm not. In some worlds, I'm a podcast host. In some worlds, I'm an author without a podcast. You know what I mean? So it's like every possibility. In some world, I was Genghis Khan. In some, you know what I mean? Like every possibility is is out there if it is indeed endless. So that's why it's very interesting to me, you know, as science progresses to know what's going to – I mean – the Neuralink. Have you heard about Neuralink yet? Well, so so real real quick, just to sort of tag it before we jump onto this new thing. The yeah, because it would be to have physical evidence of these theoretical possibilities. Right, is fucking right. crazy. So to like dude. to essentially have <laughs> to say yes that hey, we discovered a parallel universe. You exist elsewhere. You know what does that mean for religion? Yeah. What does that mean for you know what I mean? Like, is God real? But maybe God's just in that universe as well as this. You know what I mean? Like, that's the questions that that could arise. On top of that, aliens, man. I mean, we'll get into a whole alien conversation a different day. I'm going to have you back on the show for sure. Um, but, I mean, I mean, I think. You should, because I, I actually only have 15% on the computer okay. left. So <laughs> Perfect. Um, all right, man. I think that was a good time to end it. Um I'll definitely have you back in the future for a future show. It was great talking with you. Um, you too, man. It's been too long. We we used to, I don't know if people know this, but for a very brief time, we did like a source point mm-hmm. thing where it was you, me, and Stan. Yeah. And um, and th- I think that was where I, I famously admitted that I don't like Star Wars. Yeah, we're not going right? to I noticed I didn't, I yeah. didn't lead <laughs> into that, Ben. I didn't go into that conversation. <laughs> now I'm going to end. Now, now I'm losing all my followers. <laughs> Oh, that's it. I think you know what? Maybe they'll people join because they want to see us. Like, com- you know, people love conflict. That's you know, we we we'll, we'll just bitch at each other about it for a Star while. Star Wars is and great. There's some bad aspects of it. Not a big sequel fan. I'm more of a prequel and you know original trilogy fan. Than I am a sequel fan. Um, you know, but that's we'll, a, that, we'll, we'll save, get into that conversation save, later. I have a whole save. believe it or not, I have a whole other show which is called Star Wars After Hours, which is going to be on this <laughs> channel, and I will be talking lots of Star Wars. <laughs> Um, but with that being said, Ben, where can people find you? Where can people follow you? If they want to buy your book, where can they go? Uh, you guys can, uh, if you, if you have the ability, um, you can go to the alternate dimension where all of my shit already exists that is coming out next year. Uh, that would be fucking great. Cause then you could just read it a year early. Uh, but if you don't have that ability, if you're not in Antarctica chilling out in the above radio uh, atmosphere, you can go to at Mr. Ben AU on Instagram, uh, where I always respond and I get in touch with people. Um, and then, uh, yeah, go, go check out the, uh, uh, uh seance there's that uh, that video that we made about the seance from uh, from actually going to Salem and, and it's 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 fucking cool, man. We, I mean, we edited it up like it's a Conan O'Brien bit. Like it was, we did it. We really put our heart and soul in that. Nice, man. Uh, I'd like to thank you for coming on. Um, if if you haven't read Seance Room, please do. Uh, ben, thank you as always. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure, my man. Thanks, Freddie. If you haven't had the opportunity yet, subscribe to this channel. We'll be bringing on more creator content, uh, talking with creators about just life in general, uh, and we'll kind of go from there. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.